Welcome to Red Eye. Hello, everyone. I am Tom Shalou. Let's check in with TV's Andy in the Red Eye Tease Deck. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Coming up on the big show, China threatens Trump with big sticks if he starts a trade war. Oh, great. Now we're going to have a sticks race. <laughs> Plus, 2017 is being dubbed the year you'll never have to talk to anyone again. Free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty, we're free at last. <laughs> and finally, the top 75 TV title sequences of all time. Stick around to see if the Red Eye Tease Deck gets the respect it deserves. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Andy. Let's welcome our guests. She has a wonderful foundation, and I'm not even talking about makeup. Conservative political commentator, host of the Sonder podcast on faithwire.com, and Miss America 2008, Kirsten Hagland. Like a kid who sucks a t-ball, he's always way out in left field. Comedian Nick Mullen. <laughs> he's a podcast king, which translates to a television indentured servant. Comedian Dave Smith. And he's a close personal friend of the king of Queens. <laughs> Sitting right next to me is TV writer, producer, and founder of Ricochet.com, Rob Long. Okay, let's start the show. China is warning Donald Trump not to start a trade war. On Thursday, the Communist Party's Global Times newspaper wrote in an editorial, there are flowers around the gate of China's Ministry of Commerce, but there are also big sticks hidden inside the door. They both await Americans. <laughs> if they really wanted Trump's attention, they should have tweeted that. So why the tough talk? China has chafed at the latest additions to Trump's economic trade team, all of whom share the president-elect's anti-globalization beliefs. According to the newspaper editorial, these appointments will form an iron curtain of protectionism. And in another sign of rising tensions, a city in China built a giant rooster statue that I think looks a little like Trump. The rooster, which appears to be angrily gesturing at passers-by, was commissioned by a nearby mall to celebrate the year of the rooster. And yes, the artist said that a certain president-elect inspired the cartoon bird. They didn't say which one, though, did they? Uh, Dave Smith, what do you think of this China thing? You were shaking your head. Uh, you, were, you, were, you were nodding vertically, but I didn't know whether you agreed with the Chinese or what. what what's going on? I just think it's funny that they're fighting trade wars with, like, fortune cookie slogans. <laughs> but I don't know. Listen, exactly. I, it's amazing that they captured that bird. He's doing the Trump thing in the middle. Trump goes from, like, an okay to a slice. Yeah. I'm obsessed with this yes. now. And they capture it with that yeah. bird. He's doing both. If the left hand is on its way into the, like, China. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's great. But it is. Yeah. China should stop currency manipulating. Uh, that's it. So, <laughs> but the, so we have a problem with the currency manipulation, right? Mm -hmm. But what do you think? Do you think it's good that we're getting under China's skin finally? Somebody's no, kind of getting to it. I them. think currency manipulating is evil, and that's why I'm glad that America has been strictly tied to the gold standard for the last 50 yeah, years. Right. And we've never left the <laughs> $35 an ounce standard that we set. With when did we give it up anyway? Was it during it's the 1970s? 1970s. And by the way, it's Bretton only Woods. temporary. Okay. Nixon said he's temporarily suspending well, the gold standard. So we could go back on it any time now. We didn't really have the gold standard. We, we had closed the gold window. We, didn't, we gave up mm -hmm. the gold standard in the early 20th century. That's, that's what I thought. I, yeah, so right. I don't know which, where the line is. So the gold the, window meant that you could, if you were a bank, you, if you were a certain qualified per, uh, institution, you could exchange things for gold, although no one ever really did. What is this? The Stuart Varney show? This is amazing. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Late at night, you get your info. <laughs> or, or, or you could do a little reading first. I know. I know. I know. It's your show. I've maybe a little always research, been, you know, the Wikipedia thing. I've been confused about the gold standard for yeah, some time. Nobody really knows how money works, which but is look, true, actually. Here's the deal. What's, What's with the Chinese? I kind of like the fact that we're, you know, we, you know, we're, 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 we're like a hair shirt now to the Chinese. We're itching them. Yeah, look, I mean, the Chinese have a problem. and uh, The currency manipulation thing is a little crazy because they've been trying desperately to prop up their currency for a while. They've been failing. I mean, the Chinese economy is not doing that great. But look, the Chinese now are like all world leaders. Remember that, those pictures of the uh, Republican debates when all those Republicans were looking around, looking at Trump, like, is this really, is this really happening? Yeah. And that's what everybody in the world is doing now. Like, is this, wait, is this really happening? Yes. That's what, I love about that, what I love about that editorial is like, it was like, it kind of written 
the way a kind of a racist American would write the way the Chinese would say. <laughs> the, there are many things that will harm you, America. You know, like, <laughs> so you know maybe run it through the machine a little bit, make it a little more, you know, colloquial. It was. It was like, yeah. uh, yeah. we have big sticks and lovely flowers. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that was bad translation. Yeah. I mean, when you read that, big sticks, like, there just must not be something. Because, you know, Chinese is a very different language than, than English, right? It is. So things get, you know, just a little bit different. <laughs> it's a little different. But things get lost in the translation. And so I think big sticks, I don't know what they were trying to say in Mandarin, but it just didn't translate whatever it was. I like, oh. to, I like to believe that that was a direct translation. <laughs> That's uh, exactly how they meant it. I think the Chinese are a lot smarter than that. Well, they're personally. very good at making it sound like they're going to kick your ass with poetry. Well, yeah. That's what I expected. <laughs> it's so true. Well, look, they said that there's two things. There's flowers, and then there's the big sticks. Why not? I mean, everyone's been afraid. They say, you know, we can't, we can't do anything with China because we don't want to start a trade war. But who do you think, I know that you're an expert in Chinese uh, economic <laughs> relations, Nick. Sure, but, yeah. But what do you, I mean, what's it going to hurt to, you know, confront China a little bit for once? Well, I mean, just with that statue, they prove that they're better than us at making anything. I mean, <laughs> all of all of the anti-Trump art in America has been garbage. None of it's been, it's like Banksy level, the statues are terrible, the chicken's the best thing I've seen yet. Banksy actually made that chicken. Oh, did he? No. Mm. Okay, but, good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, believe me, I didn't know I, where yeah, to go from that. That's right, wow, that's good. Yeah, you're stuck now. Uh, but I don't know the answer. I kind of like, Rob, that... You know, I kind of bought it because I was like a Wall Street Journal reading uh, right. Republican, you know. And then when they said, you know, we can't. You and then can't when go there was a new president, and he suddenly said, "Oh, I'm not going to do that anymore." I'm, yeah, I, I, like, yeah, yeah, MAGA hat. Exactly. Yeah, sure. lock yeah, I know your style. I know your style. <laughs> Who's in power now? <laughs> uh, All you know, right, I'm for that. So, yeah, teach but, it round, teach it flat. Shalou. Well, we know that. listen, yeah. I, I used to read this, and I said, "Okay, I guess you can't confront the Chinese, but now I think you can." Well, look, you can always confront trade part. Uh, confront. You can always renegotiate trade. You can always do that. The problem with China is that for 2,000 years, it's been a place to, to buy things, not to sell things. They don't really have the money. They don't really buy anything. We, we can't produce things as cheaply as they can produce them, which is why we all have flat screens now, and Walmart can like squeeze the margins down to a half a cent. Right. So if it, there is a trade war, Kirsten, what... Who's going to who's gonna hurt more, the U.S. or ch the Chinese? We're definitely going to lose. Yes. That's why I, I don't understand why. Like, I understand the Make America Great Again slogan and that manufacturing, you know, we want it to come back to the United States. But at the end of the day, Americans are not going to pay the prices to have everything made in America. Yes. They're just not. And we you don't know? want to. No, exactly. They're not. They're, they're so used to, you know, roll back prices at Walmart, you know, like the yellow sticker, cheap as you possibly can find. You know, even people living in poverty in this country have televisions. They have smartphones etc because they're used to getting China. things cheap that are made right. in China so I just I, I think it sounds great but once reality hits home Americans are not going to want to pay that much for things just yeah. made also, in China. I mean, our relationship with China is like this okay China makes all of our stuff for us yeah and the way you said we consume it well here's how we consume it because then China lends us the money so that we can buy the stuff that China made for yeah. us. And they own our debt. Them. And they, yes, then they own not, our debt. They're, they're <laughs> doing more for us than we are for them. But I think we're going to keep doing that. But maybe if we move the goalposts a little, I don't think it's going to get... Well, look, the, the problem is that the, the, the jobs that are going to China now, the people making the iPads and the flat screens, are not jobs we want. Those are jobs that made by robots in about 24, 36 months. Yep. I mean, the Chinese labor market is going to be is heading for a free fall. All of this like talk about being tough on China, if, if, he, if, if, if Trump just takes a little, you know, 12, month hiatus on that and comes back, it'll be a very different situation. China's in trouble. Yeah. China's in trouble. Okay, I want to move on here. Moving on. A Kentucky high school has dropped its new mascot because it was deemed too sexist. The mascot, a stallion, was announced on Monday and sparked immediate backlash. An online petition demanded school leaders pick something more gender neutral, explaining the definition of a stallion is a male horse that has not been castrated, yeah. used for breeding, or is a slang for powerful, a powerful and virile man who has a lot of lovers. Ooh. They asked, what message does this send to our daughters and granddaughters, our sons and grandsons, and their sons and their grandsons? And one resident told a local newspaper, the mascot is wrong on so many levels. It leaves out 50% of the student population, girls. Within a day, the high school had caved and the stallion was scrubbed. School officials decided to replace it with a mascot that women would be more comfortable with seen here. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what that, is that? That's, a, uh, that's the famous lemonhead, Kirsten. It does uh, put you at ease, doesn't it? 
Oh, certainly. I yeah. mean, that mop that he's got on top there is just really making me feel a okay, <laughs> and and really like wanting to go out there and kick butt as an athlete. Yes, <laughs> but do you think? What do you think of the stallion? I mean, I didn't. I, it didn't even occur to me that. Uh, that this was exclusionary? No, me either. And actually, the dictionary that they used to define that definition that you read so lovely yes. um, was yourdictionary.com and Wikipedia. Like, not exactly the Oxford Dictionary for Stallion, right? But when I was in middle school... <laughs> it was you porn. Yeah. When I was in middle school, we were the wave. Okay, that was our, our middle school mascot, right? It was a wave. Was a it was a wave, like a literal wave, right? Uh -huh. So very gender neutral. I would like to be called a lady stallion. Like, if I was at playing basketball or volleyball or something in high school, I think that'd be cool. Actually, just about. I don't get what's wrong with yeah, it. Yeah, a few blocks from the studio, there's a bar called the Lady Stallion. It's filled with Lady Stallions. <laughs> lady. It's filled and what with exactly do Lady Stallions look like? Well, you go to the. Go, you gotta go to the bar. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Do guys drink uh, have a, at a lower price at the Lady Stallion? No, no, it's mostly guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's mostly guys. They drink. Yeah. No, don't worry about it. Look, um, Rob, what's up? <laughs> well, <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, I agree. Yeah, it's like, look, eventually we're not going to be able to name anything. Any, everything will be gender neutral, like the waves, and we'll just be like the, you know, the Harriet Tubman high it's really smartphones fearsome. and the yeah. Frederick Douglass uh, Roombas. It'll just be w vaguely non-sexual machines that we just, you know, use as mascots because they can't complain. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, Dave, what do you do? I mean, a stallion is, I, I guess I never thought about it, but it is, you know, it is, it's masculine. Yeah, uh, right, it is. But you're never going to get anything tough and cool, like Kirsten said, that's, that's not going to fall into this. How come no one's worried, like no one goes, oh, there's a stallion, maybe this will be, this will give boys an unrealistic body image or something like that, because no one cares about boys. Yeah. That's what about, what if this, was, if this was the female version of that, like mm -hmm. when there's a Barbie or something like that, all they worry about is the girls. Yeah. Yeah. And then when there's a male dominant thing, it's like all they worry about is the girls. So yeah. I don't know. That was the situation here. In the full size mascot, you can see the horse's penis, and that was the problem. You can. Yeah, if yeah. it wasn't fully erect, it wouldn't have been such a problem. But that <laughs> horse was. <laughs> no, stallion. you are lying. Are you serious? No, that's I'm 100. percent I don't get it. It didn't seem that didn't seem that big to me. But <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe. But I'm just different. But that know. looks. I mean, we're we're joking. But that's what a stallion is. I mean, it's used to breed, right? It's tough. I like, thought it was just a horse. I didn't know. Yeah, I, mean, I thought it was just a male horse, definition. too. Well, I mean, they could have changed it to the gelding, right? Which is the well, stallion the, that's been... You know, because the bulls, so the bulls and Tom, for the record, I, I, I knew what a stallion was the whole time. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Gelding was my nickname in high school. What is yeah. a gelding? Uh, don't worry. It means a really talented guy that we all <laughs> like, even though we don't invite him anywhere. <laughs> that's what that means. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Okay. You're on TV now. Everything's great. That's right. You showed them, Tom that's Chalou. That's right. No more gelding. <laughs> Moving on. A bank executive in upstate New York tried to hide his drunk driving arrest by buying up all the copies of his local newspaper. Joseph Talbert wasn't happy when his mugshot, seen here, <laughs> I guess we put it up there, <laughs> appeared in Times of Wayne County along with a story about his DUI. <laughs> So he went around to stores and bought almost a thousand copies of the paper at $1.25 a pop. If only a billion more people pulled that stunt, the newspaper industry would be saved. Here is one of the store clerks. He told me that he uh, had went to about four or five more other stores before he got here and that he wasn't going to stop until he bought every paper out. I asked him if I could have one so I could see what he done. <laughs> Uh, he said, sure, and uh, just make sure you throw it away when you read it. Bottom line, his plan worked. Nobody in that town saw the article. I guess everyone else did in the world, though. Yeah. Nick, uh, what do you think? I mean, look, I feel bad for this guy. He was just trying, he's trying to, uh, you know, he's trying to be a respectable citizen. Sure, he's also probably the Wayne County Times best customer of all time. <laughs> No one's ever going to buy that newspaper ever again. And exactly. They, they, yeah, they, they should be thanking him. Honestly, yes. yeah. He did, you know, he generated a lot of publicity for right. the newspaper. But look, now I, he's going to uh, DVR every episode of Red Eye so no one <laughs> finds out about that. <laughs> well, look, it's not just a, I, I feel bad that we're, right. you know, uh, putting his, his mug on Why? the screen. But that's actually part of the, that's considered part of the punishment for DUI and for other th other crimes, right? To like, you're not going to be able to hide. We'll know that you, you drove drunk. But the, the weird thing about it is he's a banker and he's not aware that these things are online. It's like, 
Yeah, I don't I, know if I want to give him any uh, bank with that. I don't guy. think any right. banks know how to use computers. Yeah. <laughs> They're never but, open. I can't ever log into my bank. Well, he well he was pulled over, right? He got he got a DWI. Yes. But he also then yelled and swore at the cops. Oh. And he resisted them taking a picture of him and processing his fingerprint. So then he was also charged with the misdemeanor. So this is why this guy just like didn't know how to stop digging himself That's into not fair. In this hole. I feel like you that know? should be part of the DUI. I mean, if you're already trashed, it yeah. should be expected to yell at the cops and refuse yeah, to that's what I've always said that yeah. in that guy's defense he was drunk that's yeah. fair yeah, yeah that's what that behavior is all about yes but, but he the, the paper I think was they really were uh, you know trying I guess you're saying that part of you're saying part of the yeah they do but he hasn't been like what if he's contesting it he he says uh, you know because did he refuse Kirsten to take the uh, the, 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 the breathalyzer? No, no, he didn't, and he was pronounced drunk at the scene. I see. Okay. So he just refused everything else except the breathalyzer. Right. He didn't want his picture taken, so he wouldn't be in the paper. You that was the I whole point. I guess about this. Yeah. If he if he's going to buy up all the papers, why is he blabbing to every Seven Eleven employee about what the whole story was? So that, that was she it. Go and tell the news. She brought him down. Yeah. Because he was drunk again. Uh, he was drunk <laughs> again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He woke up the drunk, next morning drunk, 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 just buying yeah. newspapers. Uh, but you know, I don't know what the answer to this is. I think. I, think, I guess it's, you know what, I don't like drunk drivers, so. I don't like bankers. Part, that is, I don't that like is, bankers. It confirms that bankers are all like, well, you know that's what? part of the people deal. you know. This is the thing, that some poor sap, you know, if the guy was uh, worked in an auto body shop, they wouldn't have put his picture on the front page of the paper. They're shaming him because he's got money because we hate the rich. Is that right, Rob? No, I don't think that's right at all. I think that we were shaming him because he was driving drunk and he was belligerent and he, he failed the breathalyzer test. And then he did some insane thing trying to buy up all the newspapers, yeah. which is drunk logic, by the way. So I think he probably can was we, drunk. Can yes. we I mean, there's no way this story makes red eye if he doesn't try to buy a thousand. That's it. No, so he could be a banker or whatever he wants to. In trying to keep it a secret, he made it a national story. Yes, but Kirsten, you admitted <laughs> it was because he was rich. That's why they put him in the paper. It was absolutely because he was rich. Yeah. But he can afford his own rehab then. So that's the good news. There you go. You're not in denial like Rob Long. Coming up, <laughs> is 2017 the year you no longer have to talk to other humans? We'll have a nonverbal discussion after the break. Do you like being a human being, but don't like having to deal with human beings? Well, Mashable says that 2017 is the year for you. Apple is making deals with movie studios, so you can see first-run movies at home through their Apple TV box. It will be pricey, but it'll be worth not having to go to a theater with icky people in it. And do you hate being with a human, even if they're facing the other direction and are separated by a barrier? Uber's introducing self-driving cars to a city near you. Even though they're not allowed in many areas, that will change because Uber does whatever it wants. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can go out to eat alone at Itza, a waiterless, cashier-free restaurant that started in San Francisco and expanded to New York. Just order on the kiosk, pick up your food, and eat while you stare at your phone. Who makes the food? Who knows? They're hidden behind a wall where they belong. And you can go shopping at Amazon Go. Just take your groceries and walk out. It feels like shoplifting, but Jeff Bezos still somehow ends up with all your money. And don't you hate that annoying 12 seconds you have to spend talking to the Starbucks employee every morning? You know, where you say tall latte and she says okay? Well, no more. Now you can order with the AI voice command on the new My Starbucks Barista feature. Sure, all this will save you time, but more importantly, save you from the awful experience of having to look in the face of a stranger and say thank you. Thank you, future. Rob, do I paint a bleak version, a vision of the future, or uh, or what? Give me a break. What? Like, like you love all that stuff. You're like, oh, you're, 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 the implication is that you just love to saunter around town and have these like uh, weird encounters with strange people. No, this sounds to me like paradise. You only have to interact with people that you choose to interact with. I think this is fantastic. It's great. Oh, but didn't I say that? You thought I was being sarcastic. You were being a little sarcastic, I thought. You were like, ah, you know, uh, you won't have to look in the eyes of a stranger. You can look in the eyes of a stranger if you want. You just don't have to have some weird conversation with the person in Starbucks. What, by the way, does not say when you say tall latte, okay, they, there's some other thing and they give you something wrong. <laughs> they do. <laughs> the the they, thing on the pressing the button, you get what you want. Don't they write a, they write a message on the cup and they give it to you to make They you want think. to talk about whatever issue. I don't know. I don't know. This is like, just shut up. Give me do my you, coffee. Do you carry cash anymore? I do. You do. But that's just because I, I, I need it in my, I need it in my day-to-day -day life, <laughs> for my hobbies. <laughs> of course, I, I won't ask about them. But 
Kirsten, what do you think of this? I bet you you uh, agreed with the um, with the, the false characterization of my monologue. <laughs> you agreed with the sarcastic point of view that says this was a bad thing. You know what? Um, I tend to yes, just because I care about our future. I care about our young people, and they are just like texting all the time, and they just don't know how to communicate with another each other anymore, yeah. and so that bothers me. But I'm a natural introvert, right? So I don't. I'm fine with sitting at home and watching my movies and not having to go to the movie theater. Like, and plus we live in New York. Okay, I don't want to talk to weird people that I don't have to talk to like there's a lot of weird people in New York But now if I go to the Midwest where I'm from or I go to the south, you know Then I'll engage with someone in conversation. It's a totally different experience in New York I want the privacy to not have to interact with weird people. Wow Kristen hates New Yorkers. Did you know that Nick? <laughs> well as one of the weird people that people have to talk to I, I You don't want to talk to me either. Right? I, I didn't so, say that all right, but <laughs> I should say I that we're, that we're in the... I'm talking to, to anybody. No, I think it's a terrible idea. I don't think it's going to save any money. I don't think you're going to... I mean, for the consumers. You're not yeah. going to save any money by going to an automated grocery store than you would by going to one that, where you have to deal with a cashier. Automation is terrible when you look at just call centers. Nobody likes using an automated system. They're infuriating. Even if you have to sit on hold for 45 minutes, I'd rather talk to a human being than, than one of the, you know, press two for this. You always it press totally zero to get the... It totally depends on who you talk press, to. No, it totally depends on who you talk to. No matter what, it's, it's going to be bad. I don't like it. I don't like this idea. I don't think it would be good for anybody. You don't... It's interesting because I thought Nick would be the one that would like it. No. And it's Why? just the I, opposite. And you know what? I've never had a weird interaction with any, any barista at Starbucks, ever. Well, then... then you're the weird yeah. one. And you're the weird customer because it's I was not, was one weird that. person <laughs> yeah. in every exchange. I don't exchange. say anything to him. I place my order. Maybe they mess up your name. Who cares? I don't need to have my name spelled right in a coffee cup. Nick is hard to spell. Yeah, okay, that's you're true. not a girl, <laughs> but you're not a girl. There's a difference, too, between the way that men experience weird people and women experience weird people. Well, this people. isn't going to stop a totally cat different, calling. Right? I mean, it's not like they have an automated homeless Right, but people. if you can like put your hat down over your ears and just like not make eye contact, it totally makes a woman's experience better if you're not wanting to engage anyone in conversation. Well, we should have separate stores for women that only they can go to, <laughs> mm -hmm. Try and then, yeah. uh, then uh, you know, jobs and places where men can go during the day. But, but look, I mean, you're, <laughs> you're wrong about the money. You do save a lot of money, and, and that's what every time they raise the minimum wage, of and those 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 restaurants just develop, you know, it, touch screen interfaces. Oh, if you don't like this, it's, it's, it's added to their profit margin. They don't pass those savings down on the consumers. Sure, no, but they, they calls get passed down to the, the consumers. Absolutely. If you can cut yes, labor in half, here's what yeah, oh, yeah, you, you cut labor, but these existing businesses will just continue to keep the prices where they. No, no, they they'll compete. They, no, compete no, no. For, they compete for. Well, they compete. What do you think of these? I've been to these restaurants. You know, uh, the first one okay. I saw was in Chicago. When mm -hmm. I went in and I ordered noodles on the touch screen. And then the, the noodles came, and I didn't have to deal with anybody, and I, I liked it. You ordered noodles? Yeah. What, what Look, restaurant I, was this? You ordered noodles? <laughs> I Just ordered noodles? It was, uh, it was a ramen place. It was a one ramen of these. Place. So they used to have these in New York. They were called uh, automats, where they yeah. would just have all the food and windows. It and looks little... like an automat. Look yeah, at the yeah, place. Yeah. Well, that is an automat. If you don't, if you don't like automation, and you don't, you don't want this stuff to happen, then the worst thing, the worst policy would be raising the minimum wage, because that's right. going to push this stuff in faster and faster. I get what Nick's saying. I don't really like the automated service online. I've had when you check out of the grocery store, and then I, I don't really love that service. But we're a couple years away from it being perfected, and it'll be great. And so, yeah, I don't know. It's not I'm, a big problem. I, I I'm have just a, tuning I, you guys out. I have oh, a. Yeah. I have a <laughs> As an as a yeah that thank you, um, as an introvert though I, I have a theory I have a theory that all of the um, output that you do during the day when you're talking to random people that you don't necessarily want to talk to it makes introverts exhausted at the end of the day so actually this will benefit people's relationships because they won't expend all this energy talking <laughs> to people throughout the day and they'll be able to spend that time with their loved ones and be able to give them the quality conversation they deserve. Wow, I see bite. it is. A, <laughs> I really thought this through. It's a bright future coming up. Halftime with TV's Andy Levy and a brand new episode of the Red Eye Podcast is available now. Subscribe on iTunes and on foxnewsradio.com. Welcome back. Time to find out what we got wrong and what we missed from TV's Andy Levy over in the Red Eye News Deck. Hey, Andy. Hey, Tom. How are you? Good. Hey, did you hear the big news about Tucker? Uh, yeah, what is all this talk about? Tucker? Yeah, he's. Uh, I guess he's going to be uh, performing live in Toronto next month. Really? Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> wow. yeah. We're all. Everyone in the building is very excited. That is great. <laughs> yeah. Back on stage. Yep. Congratulations That's to Tucker. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, China threatens Trump with a big stick. Dave, you said you're just amazed that China is conducting trade wars with fortune cookie slogans. Mm -hmm. I like the part where they talked about the Iron Curtain. I thought that was very original. <laughs> China, uh, they're, they're going to win this thing in the long run, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. It's tough to bet against them. Uh, Rob, you said the Chinese are now like the other Republicans were during the 
back during the debates. So are you saying Trump hasn't pivoted? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, that's exactly what I'm saying. Not only he's not pivoted, he's just he, everything's been pivoting around him. Yeah. So you're saying he's the fulcrum? <laughs> <laughs> What, really? I, I don't know. Come on. <laughs> All right. I'll move on. Uh, Kirsten, you talked about things getting lost in translation, like maybe the Chinese didn't say what we think they said. And I kind of agree with you. I read the actual uh, editorial in the Communist Party newspaper. We might be making too big a deal out of this. My Chinese may be a little rusty, but here's how I translate it. Several eyes staring at the external cause of the composition of U.S. economic and trade decision making. Together with Trump, the world's big opinion monitor, the team to hijack the international trading system. To the United States and the past important trading partners, ransom, it seems a high probability of the... <laughs> so I don't... I, I think we're fine. I think that was English, but no. I didn't catch a word you just said. I don't said. know. That's what, Good Google, job, though. that's what Google Translate said it was. <laughs> Uh, Nick, you really like the rooster that looks like Trump. I do. Didn't you think his hands were too big, though? Uh, I didn't. Well, they're feathers. Yeah. The bones are that you don't understand enough about chicken anatomy. The bones are much smaller. That's just feathers on top of bones. Oh, okay. All right. Well, thank you for explaining that to me. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, Dave, do you think Bitcoin will be the new gold standard? No. I don't think so. I, I like the idea of Bitcoin. I don't think there's something about gold and Bitcoin is for like uh, people like me who are conspiracy theorists yeah. who believe the government's turned against them. Absolutely. And if they can just shut off the internet or turn off electricity and take it from you, right. then it's not the, the hedge you want. Yeah, no, I, I kind of, I, I want to like Bitcoin really badly. They're doing great. I mean, if you I invested know. in it last year, you made a lot of money. I, I just can't though. It doesn't seem real. Yeah, I, I, I tend to agree. But maybe we're just being short-sighted. Yeah, it's totally possible. Uh, Kentucky High School drops a stallion mascot because it's called sexist. Kirsten, uh, Kirsten, you said you'd love to be called a lady stallion. Yeah. You're a lady cool. stallion. <laughs> All right, thank you. You're I welcome. feel complete. Absolutely. Uh, Rob, did you say eventually all mascots will be things like the Frederick Douglass Roombas? Yes. Inanimate objects that have no uh, gender no. identity at all. Okay. I believe Roomba is a trademark name. So you couldn't. See, so can't even do that anymore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it should be a Roomba. Can't even do that. They took that away from us. Yep. <laughs> also, as someone who owns a competing uh, product, I have an issue with that too. Why am I not surprised that you own an automated thing? I did. That, yeah. That was yeah. advertising TV. And it, it's connected. Mine is connected. I'm sure it is. To the internet. So yeah. it's great. Yeah. I can tell Alexa to clean my apartment, and it does. Wow, you, you... It's so fun. It, it gives you more time for all of your friends? Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I do have a couple of alternative nicknames instead of stallions. Horsies. I think Horses. horsies would... Horsies is good. Yeah. Uh, and also snowflakes, I think, would be good. Mm. Mm. Nick, you had yeah. one, right? What was your name? Oh, yeah. You call them the Winnies. It's <laughs> the Winnies related. Part. It's gender neutral, and it sounds like winning. <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Tom, you said your nickname in high school was Gelding. Yeah, I, I never know what it meant. Yeah, I know Rob tried to appease you by saying it means a really talented guy who we all like even though we don't invite him anywhere. Uh-huh. Uh, I can't let that stand. It's a castrated horse, Tom. <laughs> oh, <gasps> well, that makes sense then. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's fine. Andy, come on. Yeah. Come I, on. I, I can't do it, Rob. But you could. It. And I, I couldn't. Little, just New Year, bigger heart, maybe. Nah, nah, New Year's was like a week ago. All right. Uh, I castrated horses in high school. That's why, Andy. Say again? I, I used to castrate horses in high school. That's, that's why. right. Right, Andy? That's why they called him that. Okay. Right? All right. Yes. Tom, Tom are you supposed to be about. castrating these horses? <laughs> <laughs> I take that as a no. Uh, Banker tries to buy all the copies of a newspaper so people won't know he got uh, arrested for driving while intoxicated. First of all, I this guy seems to have learned everything he knows from Kevin Spacey's character in Swimming with Sharks, <laughs> who bought up all the Time magazines. Right. Nobody remembers that? Yeah. yeah. Hate all of you. <laughs> Nick, you said this guy is the Wayne County Times best customer of all time. That's right. I will have you know it is the biggest weekly newspaper in Wayne County. All right. It has a circulation of 12,000. Well, what's it's your because circulation? of him. What's your circulation? It's <laughs> better than yours, Andy. Yeah. How about that? I have no circulation. Yeah. Uh, Kirsten, you said he called the cops names and didn't want to get his picture taken, but that he didn't refuse to take a breathalyzer. Well, according to the Wayne County Times, the paper that Nick slandered, uh, he refused a roadside pre-screen breath test and a station breath test to determine his blood alcohol level. Ah, I read something different. So, yeah. I guess I guess I read like the the town gossip page, page yeah. six. Yeah. No, you got to stick with the Wayne County Times. <laughs> all right. I know. For all of this my is best their story. information. They were first news. They That's are the true. Glenn right. Greenwald of this story. You caught me. <laughs> 
2017 is the year you don't have to talk to anyone. Tom, I got excited when you said Itza was here in New York. Yeah. Like that. But then I found out they serve quinoa bowls. Oh, that's they serve more than that, though, don't they? No. It's just different kinds. Of, you can like pick the ingredients, I think. But they're all quinoa bowls. That's so horrible. Yeah. What, what is it called? Itza? It's called oh, Itza. Itza. E-A-T-S-A. E-A-T-S-A. Itza. Itza. Oh, Itza. that's false advertising. Yeah. yeah. You can't sound that much like pizza. And yeah. Yeah. Pizza. I think it's really annoying, yeah. Uh, Rob, I am with you, though. I think this is fantastic, as long as talking to Alexa doesn't count. No, your 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 precious girlfriend is mm-hmm. uh, exempt from this. Okay, excellent. Uh, by the way, what hobbies in your day to day life do you need cash for? None of your none of your business. Mm-hmm. I refuse uh, mm-hmm. uh, the breathalyzer. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and lastly, Nick, you said you think this is a terrible idea because you're not going to save any money by using these automated systems. Yeah. Did you miss the part where you won't have to talk to anyone? Yeah, I enjoy talking to people. Really? Yeah. Why? You, see, you ignored when I said that because you don't like talking to people. I don't like listening to people. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. maybe you should start. I don't mind like talking. I just don't like hey, listening. throw out Alexa. Get a friend. Can't do it. Man. <laughs> Can't do it. Can't do either one. <laughs> what is Alexa? Is that the Amazon the Echo thing? Oh, you can't just get you couldn't get Siri. You had to get you had to have a weird Siri one. Siri sucks. She's horrible. All right. I am done. Thank you, Andy. Yep. Coming up. Which TV show has the best opening credit sequence of all time? Spoiler alert, alert, it's not cable news. Who gets credit for the best opening credits of a TV show? Pace Magazine notes that the title sequence sets the tone for the entire series, and they've come up with the top 75 of all time. Here are the very best. At number 10, Game of Thrones, followed by Gilligan's Island, The X-Files, The Drew Carey Show, and The Twilight Zone. And let's play snippets of the top five. See if you can name them all. Sometimes you wanna go where everybody knows your name. Take a minute, just sit right there I'll tell you how I became the prince of a town called Bel Air What do you think, Rob? Cheers number five. Does that, does that sit well with you? That's okay. I think that's probably, I mean, look, The Simpsons is great. Yeah. So great people have done versions of it. But the Cheers opening, you know, the, the best thing about that was that everybody, everybody knows your name. It creates this kind of warmth so that on the show we could write nasty stuff that people did to each other. But you're already kind of thinking, oh, they all like each other because the theme song's so nice. It's so true. It's really true. It really, it, there was a warmth about it. Yep. Exactly mm. right. Interesting. Okay, let's go around the panel. Kirsten, do you agree with this list? No. What? No. What didn't make it that made you <laughs> angry? Uh, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt didn't make the top ten, which just, I, I love Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. You know, it's got this very, very upbeat, super sticks in your head kind of song. Um, Friends didn't make the top ten. The Friends opener didn't Wait make a minute, the top that's 10. universally loathed. No, it's not. It's not? I thought it was. Not among millennials. Oh, okay. That song got like too big. But then they made a video out of it. That's why everyone hates it. Oh, no, but it's like so classic. It's I hate any song that has ka 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 ka. Well, then, but Adam's family (laughs) has the snap snaps. Um, Adam's family, I don't like either. I don't like that. Yeah, no, I know. And and The Simpsons, meh, no. Okay, Uh, Nick. (laughs) I just like that you said, uh, see if you can name them all, and then they all prominently featured the name of the show. <laughs> That's right. The well, I wanted them to name, I wanted people shouting out Let's the names. Let's see who knows how to read. Not before right. we did it. Uh, Wait, hold on. Let's see if you can name this song. Yeah, yeah. The Simpsons. <laughs> can you name the show? Well, I love The Simpsons. It's one of the greatest shows ever, but that's not a great opening Wait. song. Wait! All I, good I opening. No, the sequence. Should. It's really, it's not the, it's not the song. It's so much. It's the sequence. Yeah, but it's, and it's all also about the song. the song. It's all about the song. And the, the shows with the great songs were like, uh, and I'm not saying they're the best it's, shows it's ever. It's all about the song. Family, Family Matters. Be on the list. Uh, Family, Family Matters. Family Matters had a great song. Full best. House had a great song. Yes. What's the show uh, that uh, Alan Thicke was in that just died? That's the Growing best pains. one ever. Growing Pains. Oh, Growing yeah. Pains is the best one you know, ever. He wrote that one, by the way. The, the guy who wrote um, the uh, Cheers theme song. Yeah. Two, two, but three of them, yeah. Three uh, the, it, it wasn't it two people or uh, anyway, uh, yeah. but he Vice wrote Punky Brewster team. as well. Wait, he wrote a bunch. Do you of remember his name? Gary Portnoy. Oh, I was going to yeah, say, Gary isn't it ironic Portnoy. if you don't? Remember? All right, forget it. I just looked at. There's many versions. You know, they, they. Do you know the whole story of it? They wrote like three 
different. They kept getting rejected. You can find them online. Look it up you online. Mean the cheers folks. theme. The cheers theme. Yeah. And the, and the second, the, the un, the unrecord, unused second verse is kind of weird too. It's like it's a whole song. Yeah. And it's like you know you woke up one day and your husband is a girl. It's yeah. Like one of the lyrics. <laughs> it's so weird. It's like <laughs> yeah, different the, time. Yeah. The true test of this is when now that you can watch everything on demand, it's like when you sit down to watch a show. Which opening credits will you actually sit through and not fast forward through? Right? That's a good time. Yes. And, well, and so, so Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, I always do. Also, House of Cards has a really yes. great opening a sequence one. and opening song. So I, I always watch it all the way through. I setter. love it. Yeah. yeah oh, great. I think HBO changed the game because they have these real, you know, like Game of Thrones. They have these, you know, they're so... Uh, yeah, so Sopranos, could, Sopranos is probably top five for me. Uh-huh. But yeah. they can do that now because uh, uh, network TV, they don't really let you do that because it's just it's 30 seconds or, 50 or 20 seconds of story time. That's right. So they cut them. They cut them all. It's like, like one little six-second little beat that gets you into the first act. Yeah, it's true. It's sad, isn't it? I mean, it's sad because some of them are great. Well, I'm surprised that they're all comedies instead of like some of the really fantastic uh, one-hour dramas like... Uh, like Hawaii Five O, that is a great opening. That wasn't on the ten seventy five. That had to be in there. I don't know, but it wasn't top minute. five. I put it in the top ten for sure. Uh, yeah, Miami Vice is top five great. songs oh, yeah. of all Miami time. But also like a cool yeah. mood Night setter. You know where you were. Yeah. yeah. Firefly was on there. That's a great one. Uh -huh. Kind of sets up the uh, the mood. I think uh, Star Trek. I think should have been even. I think Star Trek was was one of the greats of all time. Well, the, the, the best one, I think, for, 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 for comedies, is the most interesting one is the Gilligan's Island theme, which tells you everything you need to know. And the first season, they didn't do the whole cast. It was just, and the rest. Yes. And then eventually, there's some, you know, agents got together and said, listen, if you're going to, you got to put Professor and Mary Ann in there. Otherwise, <laughs> you know what, you know what <laughs> <one> is <laughs> heart to heart, where they, yeah. like, every episode, they're like, yeah. We're going to assume you've never seen the show before because who would watch it twice? <laughs> Here's the plot. Uh, Same with Brady Bunch. Yeah, yeah. Same with Brady Bunch. The they wife. give you the whole you story. Keep talking. Before before even keep talking. Yeah. Coming up, our dating apps turning everyone into private detectives. We'll investigate after the break. Why wait to get to know a person on the first date? You can learn plenty online beforehand. Yes, Tinder and OkCupid have turned us into a generation of private detectives. A writer at the British newspaper, The Independent, notes, stalking potential partners online has become completely de rigueur. It's simply another way of vetting someone before you meet up. Armed with only a first name and a hometown, snooping suitors can access a person's political views on Twitter, relationship history on Facebook, and career status on LinkedIn. I guess I'm old-fashioned, but I prefer to stalk people the old-fashioned way through the blinds. <laughs> uh, Rob, Rob, what do you think? I mean, we, it, 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 this is kind of a good thing. You can check yeah, up on people. Well, what's wrong with that? You, you put the stuff up online. People, are, it's for people to search, and they search and they find out. I don't think that's such a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, especially since like people are now are meeting online. There's dating apps. Like you really don't know much about yeah. that person. It's not like your best friend introduced you to somebody. So you got to you got to figure out something. Let's just at least just run the the, you know, criminal record. Yes. Well, I mean, that's the thing. If you if you've gotten into trouble, Kirsten, it can really hamper your your dating prospects. Oh, absolutely. And see, yeah, I agree that yeah, it makes sense in this world that we live in, digital technology, et cetera, et cetera, it makes sense. However, so much of our online presence is cultivated and curated to present a very specific image, right? The highlight reel, the best of everything. But then when you meet someone in person, oftentimes what you see online does not match the reality, right? So you can do all the digging that you want, but there, you know, you still might be sitting across the table from a weirdo. I'm wow. just yeah. telling you, you've got to invest the time to get to know someone first, and you cannot trust everything you read online. You know, actually, they search Kirsten, and, uh, you know, it's Miss America is the first thing that's going to come up. I mean, that really sets the bar it's high. It's so <laughs> awkward for my husband, like, at work. And then once colleagues figure out who his wife is, it's really awkward. Yeah, yeah I'm sure he's, like, really embarrassed. <laughs> exactly. He's like, stop talking about oh, yeah. Stop talking about oh, my yeah. wife. my dirty secret. Yeah. <laughs> really, don't, don't tell the other guys. I don't want it to be but, all about that. But but Rob, Rob made the point. I mean, it's, it's this this is kind of almost like going back to, traditionally speaking, if you got hooked up with someone, it would be like your friend, someone you worked yeah. with, someone you, so you've yes. at least done a little bit to make sure this isn't a murderous psychopath. Yep. Whereas now online, you're just swiping right. So you want to, but again, like, like Kirsten said, you're not going to find out, but you know, yep. who's really searching someone? Are they searching people's criminal history? 
I they like do. I've, I've committed a crime. I'll hide it from you. Yeah. <laughs> Nick, very quickly, what do you think? I You're against I it. Mean, who, no, I'm not against it. Okay. But, like, who was coming up with these elaborate lies about their background prior to this? Like, they're in some kind of, you know, stupid rom-com. <laughs> it just, you know, I, I don't think it's a problem. <laughs> it's not a problem, America. Thank you, uh, my, uh, my panel. <laughs> we we got to go. All right. No, Thanks already? Good night. Yeah, say wave.